Hello and welcome to the Horns and Whistles Workshop YouTube channel and to this video which is part two of uh, a small series of videos on how to fit the Hornby Ringfield motor upgrade kits uh, which consist of a, a CD drive motor, a 3D printed adapter and some fitting accessories to your Hornby model. Part one of this uh, series of videos covered the physical uh, task of fitting the motor into this model which is a class 47 Hornby diesel model so um, if you've not watched part one yet which covers actually how to remove the original Hornby motor and fit your upgraded motor kit then there's a link to that video in the description below I'd encourage you to go and watch that video first and actually get your motor fitted uh, at the end of part one what I do is I wire up the motor for use on DC or analog power uh, the purpose of this video part two is to show you how to wire up your um, motor or your locomotive having fitted your new motor for DCC or digital power. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do and demonstrate on this model here which will allow you to do that to your model at home. A um, couple of things I'll cover first just in terms of um, decoder choice all of the models or all of the, the stuff that I do uh, in, is done on the basis of an 8-pin four-function decoder uh, of which this is an example. These are the decoders that I normally use in my models and in models that I convert to digital for customers. This, this is a Lays DCC decoder. This one has stay alive capacity, hence the black and the blue wires that come out of the other end of it. These are my favourite decoder purely because they are excellent value. The basic decoder can be picked up for about 12 to 15 pounds which is far cheaper than anything else you'll get on the market. And a, a decoder with a stay alive capacitor, which I'm going to use in this example, is about £25. Uh, and again, it's far cheaper than anything you, else you will get on the market. And I've fitted dozens and dozens of these um, to either my own models or models for my customers, and I've never had a single failure. So I really rate these, and they've got a lot of fun functionality so for the price, I don't think you can beat the Lays DCC decoders. Um, another decent option is the DCC Concepts Zen range. They are an eight pin decoder um, uh, and they do have stay alive capacity or stay alive functionality. They're a bit more uh, expensive than the Lays DCC, um, but they are not bad value uh, and they are also a decent option. Uh, I would avoid, for uh, certainly for the application of these CD drive motors, I would avoid most of Hornby's DCC decoders. Certainly their basic 8-pin, 4-function, standard, non-sound decoder, I would avoid like the plague. It's far too expensive for what it is, and it doesn't have some of the very, very basic functionality that the cheaper Lays DCC decoders have. So with the Hornby decoders, you can't adjust certain CVs that control the motor functions such as minimum speed, mid speed, top speed, acceleration and deceleration. They, the Hornby decoders simply don't have that functionality. Um, I would also avoid the Hornby TTS sound decoders if you are using one of these motor upgrade kits in a steam model. The reason for that is, um, again, because of a lack of flexibility in the decoder, you can't adjust the chuff rate on the TTS decoder and that is literally the sound at which you get the chuff 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 as the steam locomotive um, pulls away and, and moves off. Because that can't be adjusted you won't ever get the speed of the locomotive or the speed of the model to match the chuff rate and your model will always be going much much faster than the sound suggests it should be and you can't get them to match. With diesel uh, TTS decoders you can adjust the motor steps which means that you can match the speed of the physical model with the speed of the sound. So you're fine to use a Hornby TTS decoder on a diesel model such as this class 47, um, but I would avoid them for uh, steam models and I would avoid the basic Hornby standard non-sound decoders full stop. Um, and I would, as I say, again, go for the Lays DCC series of decoders or the DCC Concepts Zen series of decoders. So for this particular job, I'll go through a list of what you need first, if I move the model out of the way. 
So the first thing you're going to need is your decoder. So this is a Lays DCC 8 pin decoder and I'm going to install a Stay Life capacitor as well. I'll go through why I do that in the video. You're going to need a pair of flush cutters or wire cutters. You're going to need a soldering iron and some solder. You're going to need a pair of pliers and some black tack. You might need a bit of wire. You're going to need some heat shrink, a craft knife and an eight pin socket for your DCC decoder. Now these sockets I buy from a guy on eBay called Illuminated Models. He or she produces lots of different printed circuit boards that can be used in DCC conversions. I'll put a link in the uh, video description to this particular product, which I really like. They're really good value. They're about £2, £2.50, I think, um, and make DCC conversion really easy. The Black Tack is something that I sell in my eBay shop. Again, I'll put a link in the description. And the Wire is something I also sell by the meter in my eBay shop. You might not need this, um, but if you do, I'll put a link to that in my eBay uh, um, in the video description. So the first thing I'm going to do is just attach the Stay Life capacitor to the decoder. Now this is really, really easy. If you've never done it before, with these particular ones, you have your Stay Life capacitor here. It has one blue wire and one black wire coming out of it. On the DCC decoder, you've obviously got your eight pin wiring harness at one side. On the other side, there's one blue wire and one black wire. Uh, it is as simple as attaching blue to blue and black to black, soldering them together. So I'm gonna shorten the wires first of all, because I, I don't need as probably six inches or so of wire there, which I won't need. So I'm just gonna cut them down so that they're a couple of inches long, an inch and a half long, just so I've got enough length to strip the wire back twist them together, solder them together, and put a bit of heat shrink wrapping over the top. So I'll put that wire to one side. I'm just gonna strip this wire back using my teeth. So you go strip back about just under a centimeter. And I've done the same on the decoder, literally just by pinching the wire between my teeth and giving it a pull. Uh, I'm now just going to cut a couple of short lengths of heat shrink, which I will use to insulate those joins and slide the heat shrink before I join the capacitor to the decoder. Slide the heat shrink over the blue wire and over the black wire. And then I'm just going to straighten out the actual wire strands there and then take my decoder and twist the black wire to the black wire and the blue wire to the blue wire. That black one's come undone annoyingly. Do that again. Right, so there you go, blue to blue and black to black are twisted together. Now I just need to secure them with a bit of solder. Don't need much, just enough to stop them untwisting. Right, having done that, I'm just going to snip down the bare wire slightly just so I haven't got quite as much length to cover with the heat shrink. And then I straighten that out and bend that join back so it's flush with the wire. And I can slide the heat shrink over. Now to shrink the heat shrink, you'll need something that I forgot to mention in the list of things you need, which is a lighter or some sort of heat source. Uh, and all I'm gonna do is hold the lighter, the flame under the heat shrink taking care not to melt any of the wire. So you don't want the flame to touch the heat shrink just for the heat from the flame to, to rise and make the heat shrink warm enough so that it will shrink over your join and won't move. 
And there you have your Stay Alive capacitor and your decoder connected together. So you can put that to one side. Now, the reason I use Stay Alive is that these Hornby models don't have an awful lot of connectivity with the rail. So the way these models work is you have the wheels on the motored bogey. You have two wheels just on one side. So do it this way. You have these two wheels here, that one and that one, are the only wheels that pick up electricity from what would effectively be the left-hand rail. Um, this middle wheel doesn't pick up any power, and these wheels over this side have got tyres on them, rubber tyres, so they don't pick up any power either. So the only connectivity you've got with the rail on the left is these two wheels here. And with the right rail on the right, the only connectivity you've got is these two wheels here, on the, now on the bottom. These wheels up here do nothing, and this one in the middle does nothing. The only pickups are these two wheels here. So that means that you've only got two wheels on each rail picking up power. That means that if you've got dirty wheels, slightly dirty track, or even if you've got points with plastic frogs on them, such as Hornby points, you're likely to lose power your, or the digital signal from the track to the decoder because there's not as many pickups on these models. If you look at a modern Hornby model or a Backman model, you'll find that on a decent model, pretty much every wheel is picking up signal or picking up power from the track, which means that your DCC decoder is never losing the signal. With these models, however, your DCC decoder may often lose the signal or lose the power unless your track and your wheels are perfectly, perfectly clean, which isn't really feasible. So by fitting a decoder with a stay alive capacitor, that means that your model, having been converted to DCC, will still run smoothly. Without a stay alive capacitor, you may find that your model hesitates or stalls on points or bits of track that aren't perfectly clean. So I always use or recommend a decoder with a stay alive capacitor when converting an older Hornby or Lima model to digital to make sure that you don't have hesitations and you still get enjoyable running from the model. So what we'll do now is we'll install the eight pin plug into the model and then all we've got to do is plug the decoder in and we're done. Um, and it's quite a simple task. So the first thing I'm gonna do, if I move the model out of the way with the eight pin plug, is put solder on the four tabs where I need to connect wires. So you've got eight tabs on this um, plug. And for basic DCC motor control, you need to do the outer corner tab. So top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. Those are the four that control picking up power from each of the rails and distributing power to the positive and negative terminals on the motor. So I'm going to tin those tabs there. And what you will also spot on this uh, socket is that one of those tabs there if it comes into focus, that one there has got a little circle next to it. A little O or circle just there. And if you look at the plug on the decoder, you'll see that the orange wire has a little mark on it. You probably can't see it on the video. So that denotes that the uh, orange wire with the little mark on it is designed to go in that pin there. And that is the uh, one of the uh, terminals that goes to the motor. So red and black go to the track, orange and gray go the other way to the motor. So that one there is your orange pin. And the pins are diagonally opposite each other. So if orange is there, then gray is that one. And then the red and black ones are the other two diagonally opposite ones. It doesn't really matter which way round you do the red and the black because you can reverse the um, direction of the model using CV29 on the decoder. So that's important because when we fit this to the model, we know that these two terminals here, the one with the little O and the one di diagonally opposite need to be attached to the motor. And then the other two 
that are diagonally opposite each other need to be attached to the track and that will complete or by then plugging our decoder into that that will complete our circuit so if I move those out of the way what we'll do is bring the model over and then I will put this here so what I'm going to do is use a bit of void here in this space here to secure my socket I don't want to put it on this weight a because the weight is metal and that will cause a short circuit and b because the weight falls out so I never want to be in a situation where my wiring and my plug falls out on top of a weight and it's going to cause it to break so it's all going to go there so what I'm going to do is just hover this over that space using these um, this third hand while I attach my wires now this is one of the wires that goes to one of the tracks so this you can effectively treat as your red wire and I'm going to attach it to this tab there that one there and this is one of the wires that come is originally fitted to uh, the model so your model should have that wire so I'm just going to tin that wire and then solder it onto there Now on this particular model, the other pickup comes from the chassis and it has this spade connector, which is something I discuss in the other video about the various different methods of getting power from this chassis. On some, it's a screw that you screw in. On others, it's a spade connector. And this one's a spade connector. So what I need to do is attach a piece of wire to this spade connector that's going to reach this socket here and then attach it to the chassis. So I will attach that piece of wire first and then we'll attach it to the chassis and then we'll plug that in or solder that in to our printed circuit board. So I'm just going to cut off a few inches of wire, just enough to get towards the back of the model, strip it down just by a millimetre or so. And then I'm going to tin that wire. And I've already tinned the back of this um, spade connector, so I can just solder that onto there. So there we go, it's a spade connector with a few inches of wire. Now that is just going to slide down on top of a little lug that is just there. And you should be able to just do this with your fingers. Just slide that on. Okay. Now, if I bring my 8-pin socket back into view, so the next wire, which is the pickup or the feed from the other track, is going to go diagonally opposite the one I've already done. So it's going to go into this one here. Again, all I need to do is strip it back. Tin the wire. And then attach it to the circuit board. If I bring that over the other side of the model, you can see that you've got feed or pickups from both the front and the back or the left and the right rails now attached to your eight pin socket circuit board. So now what we need to do is attach the other two diagonally opposite tabs, the one with the little O on it and the one that's diagonally opposite that to the black and the red wires on the motor. Now, on the basis that your decoder wires for your motor feed are the orange and the grey wires, your motor has got red and black. 
So I would say orange goes to red and gray goes to black because they're the colors that match the best. So you're going to want to attach your red wire to the one, the tab with the little O on it, and the black wire to the one diagonally opposite. Now what you may need to do, depending on, I've actually cut the wires on this motor short in my previous video where I fitted it. Um, so I need to extend those wires. I'm just going to solder a little bit of extra wire onto those um, wires on the motor. You might not need to because some of the motors that come with the kits have got quite a, a, a decent length of wire attached to the motor. Some of them are a little bit shorter and may need to be extended slightly. But again, it depends on where your decoder is going because if you're putting it closer to the, the motor, then you won't need to extend it. So I've just got two little bits of cable here that I've stripped back. Just going to twist them on just like I did with that stay alive capacitor. And then use a bit of solder to attach it. And then do the same with the other one. Twisted round. Uh, I need to clean that iron. Okay. And then you can attach that there. Uh, and again, a little bit of heat shrink. Now, because those wires are open ended at one end, I hadn't, I didn't need to put the heat shrink over first, because I can just straighten that out. And then before I solder the other end of the wire to the the printed circuit board. I can slide the heat shrink over and melt it over that join. And again, I'm just going to carefully apply a little bit of heat, not directly to, but underneath and you need to be extra careful that you don't um, melt any of the plastic on your model when you do this. Just enough to get that heat shrink to shrink over the join so it can't slide away. Okay. So um, I've got two bits of black wire here so I just need to trace which one goes back to the red. It's this one here is the one that goes back to the red. I'm just going to tuck this other one out of the way into the coupling there. So that one that goes to the red is going to go onto this tab here, the one with the O on it. So again, I'll bring my third hand back in, hold the uh, printed circuit board. Strip the wire back a little bit. Tin the end of it. And then I can attach it to doing this a little bit cut handily to make it visible to the camera. There you go. To my PCB. And then I do exactly the same with the other wire onto the diagonal opposite corner. Theory, that's the last of the soldering so let's have a look at what we've done so we've got our eight pin socket here we've got four wires now attached to the tabs in the top left top right bottom left bottom right corner the one with the O which is this one here is the one that the orange pin of the decoder goes into the orange is one of the terminals for your motor control and the gray is the one that's diagonally opposite that an orange and gray go to the motor the other two here that one and that one go to the track red and black go to track orange and gray go the other way i.e to the motor and that is how you know which way around you need to do it what i'm going to do now is put a dob of black tack 
on the bottom of this printed circuit board. Now, if you have a look at the bottom, the solder joints are all bare. Now to avoid any short circuits, that's why I don't put it on the metal weight. I would also encourage you to cover those with your black tack before you stick it down. And then stick your circuit board into the model onto a plastic surface. There you go, so that's that stuck in there. Now I'm just going to tidy the wires. I'm going to tuck the wires down the sides of the weight so that when I put my body back on, I don't catch any of the wires in the body. So there you go, the wires all tucked away. And if you need to, like I do here, just take an extra piece of black tack, just turn it into almost like a sausage or a bit of string, or bend it around the wires that you want to stick down and then just stick them down like that. And I'm actually gonna use a screwdriver just to wedge that down into the gap between the weight and the chassis so that they will be tucked away nicely. Make sure you don't break any of the wires when you're doing this, mind you. So there you go. You see the wires now are nicely tucked away. None of them are hanging out of the side of the model. None of them are going to foul on the bodywork when you put the bodywork back on. And you also just need to make sure that you've got enough uh, flex in the wire for your chassis to be able to, sorry, your motor to be able to turn, you know, having tipped that almost on its side, that's popped out there. So I'll just tuck that one back. In fact, I'll use a bit of black tack on that one as well, because otherwise it's going to keep doing that. So they're all nicely attached. So now all I need to do is plug my decoder in. Now, just have a look at the top of the plug and make a note of which pin the orange wire goes to and make sure that that pin goes into the hole with the O there. So I need to turn this one round and I simply plug that in. Now, when you do this, just make sure you don't bend any of the pins so I've got them all uh, located and so I'm just going to pinch and that's plugged in and what I just need to do now is tuck my wires into here like so my decoder there and tuck my capacitor in now space in this model is a little bit limited so I've literally had to tuck it all in there on models where you've got a bit more space you might have a bit of plastic or a bit of space here where this weight is that you can use a bit of black tack to secure your decoder and your stay alive capacitor. But that's it, all done. Your um, stay alive uh, decoder is plugged in to your eight pin socket, which you've wired to both of the rails, both of the motor terminals. So now that is a DCC fitted locomotive ready to be put on the track, programmed and run. So what we'll do now is we'll go over to the track, we'll go through the settings that you need to program to the, the decoder for these six volt slim motors, and we'll give it a run. So here we are on the test track with the body of the Class 47 reattached. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just go through some basic CV programming that you need to do for these CD motors, and then we'll give it a run. So I'm gonna leave the default address on number three, now this controller is a multi-mouse um, controller, which allows me to uh, program CVs, but doesn't allow me to read what current CVs are. But I know what CVs I need to set. And what I'll do is I'll put a list in the uh, video description of all the CV adjustments I've made. So you don't need to take any notes. I will do it on camera, but I will put all of the settings in the description. So the first one we're gonna change is CV29. Um, CV29 is like your master decoder settings. And one of the things I need to do is turn DC conversion mode off. Now, just very briefly, DC conversion mode, when it's switched on, allows a DCC model to run on an, on an analog track with an analog controller. However, when you have a stay alive fitted, it's recommended that you turn that function off because the stay alive ultimately provides power to the decoder in the form of DC power which can often uh, 
uh, cause issues if you have DC conversion mode switched on. So in order to do that, I'm gonna set CV29 to two. And when you apply the setting, you get a bit of a shunt. Uh, and the next thing I'm gonna do is just sort out my speed parameters. So I'm gonna set CV number two, which is my uh, bottom threshold or, or minimum voltage speed to two. And then I'm gonna set CV six, which is the mid range of the speed curve to 15. And then I'm gonna set CV5, which is the high end of the speed curve, or the max speed, to 60. And then I'm just gonna sort out my acceleration and deceleration. So I'm gonna put my acceleration, which is CV number three, to 20. And deceleration, which is CV number four, to four. Now I mentioned at the beginning of this, of this video why Hornby decoders should be avoided because many of those settings that I've just adjusted on this particular decoder are not available as adjustments that you can make on the Hornby decoders so you can't actually have any influence or control over how the model uh, runs in terms of the speed curve. So let's give this a go. So you get a nice, slow, smooth crawl there as we accelerate through the speed curve. We'll take it up to top speed. And that is the maximum speed, which as you can see is a, a nice, reasonable, prototypical top speed. And then what I'll do is I'll just show you the benefit of the stay alive. When we get to uh, a certain point, I will say stop. And what I will be, have done is cut the power and you will just see how the Stay Alive keeps the running really smooth because it will keep the model going even when the power is completely removed. So, stop. So that is now running under the power of the Stay Alive. And it will slowly slow down. There you go, it's done half uh, a lap of my test track. So you can see that where you have things like um, the plastic frogs on points, which are those bits in the middle, that V, which is a big plastic frog, the Stay Alive really does smooth out the running of the model over those points. You can see there, it runs over even really slowly at a crawl without any hesitation, thanks to the fact that we fitted a decoder with a Stay Alive capacitor fitted. Um, I don't think I explained it at all at the beginning, but the Stay Alive capacitor effectively is stores a reserve of power so that when the power from the track is interrupted, the power from the Stay Alive that is stored in the Stay Alive, which acts a bit like a battery, but it discharges and charges up very quickly, that power keeps the model going. So there we go, that is all done. So over those two videos, we've installed the uh, CD drive upgraded motor. We've given the model a bit of a clean and service. We've now fitted it with DCC uh, with a stay alive and programmed it so that the CVs uh, create a really nice smooth speed curve with a decent uh, sort of top speed and that runs really well. So I hope those videos have been uh, interesting. I hope they prove to be useful to you as you do that work on your model or models and hopefully through doing all of that you will give your, your vintage models a new lease of life uh, and allow them to keep running for many many years to come. Thank you for watching.